Ajudando com o meu lugar agora. to sense what are the problems, what are the challenges, brainstorm on the most important topic. So uh, this uh, management meeting today is uh, happening at a very important time and uh, uh, we hope that the Commission will start, the new college will start on the 1st of December. <coughs> but the European Commission, we have to be always on time on trying to expect the challenges and uh, the opportunities, strategic agenda, so synergies, discovery is very important, but also to see where the gaps are. So all these ideas are going to be harvested in order to be entered in the work program specifically mentioned in your mandate for two reasons. The selfish one is that you are a big... The, the reason I like to come to GRC, I don't get it so often that I'm really a superstar when I come to, <laughs> to the meeting. <laughs> so I already feel encouraged at the beginning of our meeting and, and, and you're right. Uh, I've been, I think I've been here quite a few times. I think this is my fourth time. And uh, of course, uh, that's a bit of a, a legacy that uh, when you can uh, remember that uh, you kind of inaugurated or visitor centers or we've been at the opening or gardening, which I know as a father of three children, how important it is for happiness uh, of the families and, uh, and life uh, work balance. It's a, it's a pleasure to see that uh, institution prospers, develops and uh, that uh, you had the chance to contribute a little bit to the, to the great job that a joint uh, uh, research uh, uh, center is really doing. I think Charlina was very right. I came here on the eve of what would be very important decision. So just for you to know, my last uh, item on the agenda, it's uh, uh, two nights lunch, which will start at uh, 21.30, which I hope still to catch in Strasbourg uh, with my political family, just to make sure that tomorrow we will have no hiccups and that we can finally start to work because everybody is ready um, uh, to deliver on uh, all the priorities. Our new president set out uh, for the whole uh, commission for the European Union and I will come back uh, to them a little bit later. But I can tell you that uh, when we had our meetings on my uh, future portfolio and when we've been discussing the foresight, I was uh, telling her about the GRC and she is really a modernizer in uh, how she wants to transform the things, how we adopt the decision that we have to use more of your scientific evidence, we have to be more anticipatory in uh, decision making, that we have to really transform the, the way how we uh, adopt uh, the decision to use the foresight, to, to be much more e-government like if it comes uh, to um, reducing the administrative burdens uh, in, in our system and she was uh, very impressed when I told her that we have almost 3,000 scientists actually working for the commission at our five sites and when I was telling her what you do and how exciting it is. So we would have a strong support for her and my personal ambition is to visit you again and this time with the new president of the European Commission because uh, I think she, she would laugh uh, to see what I know is here and uh, some of those labs I'm going to visit again uh, today just to kind of update uh, my own knowledge about uh, your latest work. Because what was so impressive when I was uh, here on my previous visits that uh, uh, I was uh, at that time going from the lab 
to the lab. And I was uh, asking the people who've been working in these laboratories, can you tell me, are you the best in the world? Do you do the world cried science? Do you need something from us to, to help you to be the best in the world? And I was very much encouraged to hear from most of our scientists that uh, what you do here in ISPRA or at other uh, uh, sites of the GRC is cutting edge science. That it's something where we are excelling as the Europeans and this is what we need to consolidate, improve and make sure that it will have more political relevance and that we, we are much better than in the past to bring all the European innovation to the market and to the, to the practical implementation. This is what we need to improve uh, in Europe to compete in this uh, very uh, uh, dramatic, uh, dynamic and turbulent uh, world we are living in. So I, vis I visited uh, uh, Hill, Patton, Karlsruhe, Ispra, of course. So Seville is next because we have high hopes for all the modelings and uh, for all the uh, foresight activities which are taking place uh, there. And, uh, and uh, you might be assured that you will have uh, strong support not only in me and uh, Commissioner Gabriel, but also big enthusiastic support coming from the, uh, from the new uh, president, Ursula von der Leyen, and we'll be working together to make sure that your work is used much more in our daily operations and in a, in a political uh, and legislative work uh, of uh, the Commission. I think that we have to be much more open and much stronger in uh, making a good PR uh, about uh, what you do. Because some of the things uh, which you do here are so impressive. I remember that uh, when I was in uh, Argonne, uh, Chicago National uh, Laboratory, because I'm trying every three, four years um, to do such a technological tour, to go to the US, to go to some leading uh, uh, leading scientific institution there. I studied at Stanford, so I'd like to see what's happening at Silicon Valley, but also to visit other, uh, other important uh, countries in the world, just to compare where we Europeans are standing. And I went to this lab. And I visited the Smart Grid Laboratory, and I visited the, the uh, Department of Energy Electric uh, uh, Vehicle Laboratory as well. And then we invited the American friends to come over here. The difference was enormous. I mean, what you have here is state of the art, and I saw how impressed uh, our American partners have been, how we are testing uh, the electric vehicles, what we do with the smart grids, and we show them a little bit around, and they say, so we don't have this in Chicago. And I said, you're right, I know, because I've been there. So I can really compare it. That these are the things which we have to really work on, because, this, because you are, I would say, the, you are giving this uh, great uh, patch of excellence on what uh, the European Union means, what we do in the Commission, and we have to work more with this excellence also in how we are dealing with, uh, with the outside world, and I see it as a part of my job. When I was coming here for the first time in, in 2010, I was talking to Margot Wallström, uh, and uh, she knew your work, and she told me, you know what they say about the GRC? I said, what, Margot? That this is the best hidden treasure of the European Commission. So treasure you are, and now we are going to not only discover you, but to promote you, because I think we need uh, uh, the, this positive good story, and we need to use uh, your scientific uh, evidence-based work more in what the Commission has to deliver to the uh, European people and also to, uh, to, our, to our member states. I was working with you, and very much I appreciate your concrete uh, contributions on uh, European Battery Alliance. I think without your scientific support, we wouldn't be as uh, far as we are today. When I was uh, driving in the car over here, uh, I was just looking through the, through the recent uh, articles, which clearly proves that we are catching up with our Asian uh, competitors. And since we started to work on the European Battery Alliance, uh, we managed to, to channel more than 100 billion euros of private investment into this sector, which was non-existent two years ago when European car makers been kind of resigned to treat the batteries as a commodity, which we will buy from Asian mm -hmm. competitors. And uh, it took me a while to simply convince them that uh, it's not the batteries they want to export to Europe, that uh, eventually after electric bikes, electric scooters and electric buses, this would be electric cars, which will be exported from Asia to, 
uh, European Union. And therefore, we just simply have to be much more aware what does it mean, strategic autonomy, what, the, what does it mean, technological sovereignty, and we have to be very, very uh, uh, sharp uh, on how we approach uh, these strategic choices which are, which are ahead of us. So thanks to your help, we did well, and I also would reveal no secret that uh, we've been working very closely with our standardization bodies like Sen and Senelec, but I would like to ask you, the JRC, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about it a little bit, to help us to speed up the work, accelerate it as much as possible, and to deliver of new standards of the greenest, the best, the most sustainable batteries on this world. I want to ask you for your help, for assistance, so we can come up with the legislative proposals where we would really carve the standards into the legislative stone and that this would be the standards of the best batteries in the world which will be manufactured but also used in Europe. I want to thank you for all the work you have done uh, for key performance indicators for the, uh, for the energy union and I will expand on that a little bit in a second when I will be talking about the Green Deal because you've been also helping us uh, to work and measure what member states are delivering in national energy and, and climate plans. And uh, without your uh, input and contribution, we also wouldn't start another initiative which is becoming, as a spin-off of an energy union, uh, bigger and bigger. And this is platform for the coal regions, which we are going to expand uh, into the regions uh, with uh, uh, heavy uh, industry and difficult uh, transformation challenges. And, which will be also supported by what was, again, uh, just the idea of Jerzy Buzek in mind, that we should support this transition and transformation by the Just Transition Fund, which would be one of the key tools to deliver, to help us to deliver on the Green Deal and these very, very important transformation uh, challenges of the future. Again, without some of the studies you prepared for the next economic future for some of these coal regions uh, in Europe, it would be very difficult uh, for them uh, to start to work and to, to deliver on this very high challenge. I very often refer to the moment which kind of spurred me to think what can we do for the coal regions uh, and that was uh, the discussion I had in Katowice with the local government where I was of course expecting a bit of a, uh, tough uh, discussions with the local leaders because <laughs> they've been very much worried what would happen with all our climate goals and what it would mean for the local employment and for the region. I was very much surprised when the president of the local region of parliament told me, Commissioner, please work with us. We need your help because we do not want to live in the regions which would be depopulated. We do not want to see our young people leaving because uh, they would simply um, be in the situation where they would be worried that the kids would have respiratory diseases that there will be no investment coming, they will not get a good job. We do not want to live in depopulated areas and cities. Help us to bring some new economic life into this region. And this is exactly what we are doing, thanks to your help, with 41 regions across the Europe, and the demand is growing, and your expertise would be needed more than ever. You've been helping us to develop new approaches, how to make our cities smarter, what to do with energy efficiency, how to change the, uh, the, the building codes uh, to make sure that uh, we would uh, uh, stop uh, that, uh, I would call it even abuse of, of, of energy because we still, and you know it very well, use 40% uh, of our energy in Europe for heating and cooling of our buildings. And we know that with today's technology we can do much, much better than that and we have to make it practical usable and there where science comes with the, with the real policies and, and improving the lives of the people in the city so they can breathe the cleaner air, can reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and at the same time we can save on energy bill. So that's, I would say, something which is uh, very important and I know that also for the President uh, uh, von der Leyen this is very high on her agenda. So I can go on and on about how you helped me to build uh, the energy union and therefore I know that it would be absolutely instrumental in delivering uh, these six key priorities uh, which uh, the new president presented to the European Parliament uh, and for which uh, she was voted in as a president-elect and I believe that tomorrow uh, will be supported by the majority of MEPs as a new college. I saw your program 
So I know that you are going to have a detailed discussions on all six priorities, the Green Deal, the economy that works for people, Europe fit for digital age, promotion of European way of life, stronger Europe uh, in world, and push for European uh, democracy. If you allow me, I would therefore elaborate a little bit on what I think should be kind of uh, chapeau for all of these priorities and where I very much would like to use your potential and your insight and help. I think for any priority, for everything we would do in uh, this uh, new European Commission, we have to have one target, one goal in mind. What needs to be done that Europe in 2030 and beyond would be one of the top three economies in the world. That's the challenge. How to make sure we would be not squeezed out in this huge competition and pushed aside by China and United States of America. What in our different areas of responsibility we have to do to be a tough competitor, to stand our ground and to be one of the top three economies uh, in 2030 and beyond. Therefore, when I was explaining uh, to, the, to the new uh, president how I see industrial policy, uh, Green Deal uh, plan, and all the accompanying measures, I said that this is so crucial, not only for the, let's say, geopolitical position of the European Commission, what kind of political influence we would have in the world, which is important, and we can speak for hours how Europe uh, is now uh, the, 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 the good guy to whom a lot of, uh, uh, of the countries are looking up, that we have a big responsibility, not only for tackling the climate change and promote rules-based system, but also for promoting this fair, uh, uh, fair way of life. But it's very important also for our internal cohesion in the European Union. Simply, if we wouldn't be competitive enough, economically strong enough, will we have enough money to, pro uh, to keep up and promote our social model in Europe. We just simply have to see how our position in the world to be and to remain one of the top economies is important for the social well-being of our citizens. It's as important as that, and I think, therefore, we have to look at all the things we do from that perspective, mm -hmm. where it would leave the Europe in 2030 and beyond, because what we do now clearly would have direct impact on, the, on the, this global positioning of Europe and, and, and the European Union in uh, this uh, globalized uh, and dramatically changing world. Therefore, what we want to do is to use already Commission work program, which uh, we are working hard uh, uh, to prepare, and I hope that we'll be able to adopt it in the first half of uh, January. And we would like to already include some foresight teasers in front of each of the priorities. So why this matters for Europe? Why this matters for European citizens uh, also within this long-term perspective? And I also want to, to do it just to kind of prepare the services and my, my colleagues, commissioners, that this time we should really use the scientific uh, evidence and, and all that foresight uh, we have available uh, for our work for making sure that what we adopt is future-proof, future-oriented, and it's aimed at the global excellence. That should be our goal. If it comes um, to the Green Deal uh, priorities, we had a couple of uh, uh, brainstormings uh, on, uh, on the Green Deal, and I think that uh, we would have to kind of marry the, uh, the big ambition which the, uh, which the president, as a president-elect, uh, presented in the European Parliament, to reduce further greenhouse gas emissions uh, between 50 to 55 uh, percent, with uh, also making sure that the industry can technologically cope with that, that we would be able uh, to channel enough funding and financing into this uh, transformation, which is not easy, and that it would have to be uh, a new way how we would kind of streamline that goal uh, through all the work which the public authorities do, from public procurement to promote green technologies to behavioral change and teaching in, uh, at, the, at the universities, down to, and I'm a big supporter of that, of also protecting 
some of our industries uh, who uh, would have very difficult life uh, if uh, we would uh, continue with the policies which I called uh, uh, manufacture clean and import dirty. Simply some of our industries would have a big problem uh, to, to make it, like steel, cement, aluminium, and, uh, and we, can, we, can, we can go down the list. And therefore, I think your great contribution would be, what would be the best way how to, in a positive sense, protect uh, these European sensitive sectors again, and against carbon leakage? I think that uh, carbon adjustment tax is one of the recipes, but how we should measure it, how we should uh, deal with this issue, because when we know that U European steelers can produce steel with 1.6 to 2 tons of CO2 per ton of steel, and we know that Asian producers need 3 or 4 tons for making the, the same ton of steel and very often of the lower quality, how can we sustain it in the long run that we would force our steelers to manufacture clean steel and uh, through public procurement to import dirty one? Simply, we, if we want to be that serious about these huge ambitions, we have to be very comprehensive and we have to cover, let's say, all the openings which, which, we, which, we, have, uh, which we have there. So, uh, Green Deal, uh, minimum uh, uh, wage, uh, uh, fair pay uh, for uh, uh, men and uh, uh, women are one of the uh, priorities which uh, will make it into this uh, first 100 days. I think that uh, uh, we are still thinking uh, how, to, how to make it uh, most palatable. Uh, I forgot also the artificial intelligence. So these are the initiatives the president uh, announced that she would like to deliver upon in the first 100 days. I think, as I see that this stage probably will go uh, first through the communication to describe uh, what, what is the challenge and what would be the roadmap and the, and, and the, and the planning for uh, later delivery, because I think on many of these things we would need, again, your help in proper impact assessment, in measuring, in modeling, in making sure that what we, what we present is modern, it's up to date, and um, it's uh, really, uh, it's really uh, to, the, uh, to the point. How we would like to make sure that foresight is now becoming part of our uh, daily, daily operations? First, uh, we did already the mapping of the foresight uh, capabilities uh, within the Commission. Probably you know, for me it was uh, news that we have 95 units across the Commission uh, which deal with uh, foresight. It just uh, proved that also DGs felt that this is something new, which is something what we have to use. And now I think we'll have to find a way how to synergize them, how to use the best people, the best uh, output. And I would like uh, to use all that uh, uh, all that information, all that potential which is being built uh, uh, around you, around the JRC and the SecGen. We need system integrator for foresight. It should be you, it should be SecGen for the political guidance, and of course uh, we would be working very closely with the EPSC for, I would say, presentational and uh, uh, priority uh, setting uh, programming because they will be, of course, working very, very close, uh, very close with the president. So we need to make sure that within our own house we know what we do, how we use uh, our uh, potential, who does what, and uh, to which priorities uh, we are devoting our our precious resources. And that would be, I would say, task uh, for all of us uh, at the beginning of this of this new. Uh, commission to make sure that uh, that we are running uh, very very smoothly and we know how to support each other. I am going to invest a lot of also my personal efforts to make sure that you would consolidate what exists already interinstitutionally in Brussels. We have these ESPAS uh, foresight networks, which uh, generates a lot of sympathy, enthusiasm, and you can hardly see such a harmonious uh, meetings uh, between European Parliament, Council, Commission. Uh, all the committees, EES, ECB, uh, Court of Auditors, like in ESPAS. So they are sitting together discussing how they can contribute uh, in some kind of pledging conference type of uh, discussion to the better foresight and to the better cooperation. We have to consolidate it. We have to make sure that this would work even better in the future. And then we have to go outside. I want uh, to create like uh, EU networks of uh, 
I call it for myself of ministers for the future. I think we need just to tell to our member states uh, about your work, about how foresighted anticipatory governance is important, and to have a contact point uh, on the minister level in every, uh, in, in every member state who would be working with us on these issues because we can help them a lot, they should know what we do, and I'm sure that we can also get a, a lot of very positive feedback. And I also want to set up the network of the leading foresight uh, academic institutions or think tanks, and here I would rely on your advice, with whom you work, with whom you feel comfortable, who are these partners, who are the leading institutions with which we can join forces or to whom we can delegate part of the research which we need to do, but you should be the synergizer of all that input which we will be getting from uh, these uh, uh, excellent institutes. And of course, the challenge would be how to use all that information, all that knowledge into what is always a challenge uh, when, when we talk about the science, how to make it practical and politically relevant, how to bring it to the uh, to the 13th floor, how to bring it to the inboxes of my fellow commissioners, how to bring it to the papers, that these would be the headlines about which the politicians, uh, scientists and think tanks would be, would be discussing. And for that, uh, I have a few ideas. Uh, the, 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 the first one, as I said, we will try to bring these foresight teasers already in the commission work program. Then uh, the second thing is that uh, we will have probably the chance to discuss it later on. I would like to discuss with you the big topics which uh, we should uh, start to work on to include the most relevant of them already in the first uh, annual foresight report, which should simply establish our new trademark. Foresight in the EU being super relevant and bringing very important ideas. It could be sometimes what Al Gore called inconvenient truth but we are going to put it on the table and we are going to generate the discussion about it. I would like to uh, see the foresight uh, uh, annual report sometimes in the late spring because I believe, and I will come to that in a second, because it would fit very well in the political cycle. I would like to ask you to think with me how can we prepare a two-pager, three-pager, of some kind of horizon scanning most relevant uh, um, events or issues or the topics which we can send every month, every second month, you will tell me what is practical, what is feasible, what is possible, into the inboxes uh, of our commissioner. So they would feel part of our efforts and they would feel informed because the things you produce, the things I was reading before the hearing are super important and very interesting and they love to read it. But we need to make it in a concise form and we need to find a way how to make it attractive for them. So I'd like to discuss with the president that each month we can have like a few minutes in the college time devoted to, I would say, this horizon scanning of the most important events. That we should develop some kind of culture of informal, uh, of the informal uh, uh, talks, uh, sometimes uh, uh, in the evening, as they call them, fireplace uh, discussions, where we can freely uh, uh, discuss, debate uh, what's happening, what's next, and, and really to, ha to create for us uh, this, this space uh, to think so we can really uh, legislate, uh, legislate better. What are the topics which I was thinking and which I had uh, discussed uh, preliminary with, uh, with our president should be on, on, our, uh, uh, on our horizon, on our radar? I think, and I would very much appreciate your contribution and uh, uh, your foresight report uh, on uh, the technological supremacy. What we need in Europe to make sure that we would be technologically sovereign, that we would have our economic uh, autonomy, and that we would be the relevant player, as I said, uh, in the decades to come. In which technologies today we have the upper hand? and what we need to do to consolidate it. In which technologies we are dramatically la lagging behind and what we need to do to catch up. What are the, the areas which are crucial for the success of European economy and, and for our social model? And I believe that this should be one of the contributions which we should be able to hopefully tackle already in our first uh, 
annual report. I would also link it with all the challenges which you tackled so well when you prepared your piece on artificial intelligence. I mean, when you look at other uh, pieces of information I'm receiving recently, we are really at the situation when we are risking to become digital colony. We, have, we are nowhere in search engines, we are nowhere in browsers, we are exporting our uh, personal data almost uh, without any control to these American, American giants. We do not control our digital space as Russian, Chinese or Americans are. And simply we just have to put these questions on a table. What does it mean for all of us? What does it mean for our economy? Do we have enough fuel, enough data fuel, to be successful in artificial intelligence when we cannot like, uh, really cover uh, all these digital, digital challenges. I'm, I'm sure that you can put many more questions on this, but I just would like to, to tell you what would be great contribution to the European debate if you help, help us to develop uh, a good foresight report. I think that another big topic for the Europe would be middle class. What is the future of middle class in Europe? What is demography? What are the skills we need? What we simply need to do to make sure that our advantage, which today is that we have the best uh, workforce on the planet, would remain here. What needs to be done? And that's something which I think is very important uh, for the future of the, of, the, of the EU. How should we tackle security? Today it's not about tanks and cannons. Of course, they are part of it. But we see how much damage you can do through cybercrime, uh, through, um, through uh, the work of... Uh, uh, intelligence, and how should we make sure that also these things are under control? How can we bring the worlds of politicians, of experts and intelligence European community closer to each other, as they did it in those countries where foresight is playing a very important role in decision making? What needs to be done? That we can talk to each other, we can trust each other, and we can really start to build this new relationship which would bring us new quality of uh, security policies. And uh, uh, the, the, the last uh, topic I would, I would mention would be something which we should do with the European External Action Service just to get us closer and to share, and to share our, uh, our expertise. How to deal with Africa? What shall we do with raw materials? How to better tackle migration? Do we use our development aid in a way that it uh, help us to promote the African and, and our interest in that continent? Or are we going to support them and lose every international competition in the UN system to Chinese, despite the fact that we are biggest contributor to the uh, development aid on this planet? These are the questions to which we need, not only the problems, but also honest answers. What needs to be done? And then, of course, what is the preferred scenario? How can we backcast it back to our current job, to what we do today, and translate it uh, into the concrete, uh, concrete proposals and uh, concrete legislative, uh, uh, legislative propositions. One more thing about uh, link with the member states. I think it's, it's crucial. And when I saw what you do with the new concept of resilience, how you develop the dashboard for our member states, very impressive. I think we should enlarge it. We should work closer with the member states. We should bring the authorities and the leading uh, think tankers closer to us and uh, to make this very, very relevant for their policies. But I even would say that once we prove that uh, this is of a big value, maybe to include it into the new modernized country-specific recommendation. And I don't want to say that we have to go through all the criteria you are measuring because it's uh, around uh, 20 plus. But if you have one fact, like what I discovered about my own country, Slovakia, that if we continue with the current uh, business model that all, up to 70% of the workforce is under the threat of losing the job by 2030 because of technolo technological change, artificial intelligence, robotization, that's, that's the fact which every government should know. That guys, if you do nothing, you will have a big problem. And that's, I think, the message every prime minister would hear, every minister for future would like to elaborate on, and this is how we prove that we are very relevant and useful for you. Work with us, because we can tackle these issues uh, early on. So coming to, the, coming to the cycle, how I see it in the ideal world, and of course we'll see how we'll be able to implement it. As I said, we are starting with a commission work program 
uh, hopefully with a good foresight uh, teaser. We will adopt it. Uh, we will have country-specific recommendation in, in March. Then I hope in the later spring we can come up with our first uh, uh, annual foresight report, which I hope can impact the discussion of the social partners, European Council in June, generate the public debate, and then the President can reflect uh, how this resonated uh, uh, within the public opinion in Europe, work on some of the most relevant issues in the State of the Union speech in autumn, and then to build up on that in the next Commission work program. And then we would go on and on, and this is how I see we can embed foresight and your work into the political cycle and make it relevant for, for what we do in the European Union. And here, I believe that the fact that I'm responsible for the programming could actually help us <laughs> to use the, the insight uh, which you would do. Concerning the coming back to the, to the hidden treasure and to the, to, the, to the PR, I think that what should, be, what should be our ambition here? I think it should be very simple. We should strive at global excellence in foresight. That the GRC would be recognized, trademark, yeah, these guys are super strong, they are doing a great job, they managed to link it with political priorities. They are top class foresight community. And I would like that our reports would be so good that we will be able to bring them to G7, to G20, that we can have our own panel or a day in Davos, that uh, the industrial days in Brussels would have one day to devote it to the, to the foresight, and that we can bring this foresight community, let's say, here in Ispra, and to have foresight dates here in Ispra to get uh, the relevant people, institutes, uh, uh, thinkers uh, to come for two, three days over here to have uh, uh, enlarged management meeting where you can discuss uh, the high quality work which we will be doing in the foresight and to, and to establish ourselves uh, on, this, on this global market and to show that we mean business and actually we do it, we do it uh, very, very well. So this is uh, just a couple of the ideas I got uh, Excellent uh, script for my speech, but as I'm sure you are feeling right now, I kind of departed from that. And, <laughs> and uh, because I wanted to tell you something from, from my heart, something very, very personal. And just to conclude, I just really would like to tell you that we will be working uh, very closely with Maria Gabriel. We are currently like a duo on this digital world because I was also replacing uh, Vice President Ansip for the last uh, few months of our Monday since he became the member of the European Parliament. We'll be working very closely with uh, all uh, the Vice Presidents, Commissioners, and I just would like to reiterate once again that the new President is very much motivated and interested in working with you and establish this new anticipatory governance, uh, modern uh, 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 legislating and uh, foresight capabilities of the, of the European Commission. So I'm very much looking forward to our continuation of our work because I think that I never left you. The Gardner is still here, the Joint Research Center is there. I see some familiar faces. So I believe that it will be just the continuation of the great relationship and I really would like to thank for that and, uh, and just to show you how much I'm looking forward to the next mandate. Thank you very much. horizontal work on the work program, we are there to take our, that you specifically mentioned the geopolitical uh, uh, type of commission that we're going to serve, also to ensure that there is a monitored performance and monitorable, think about well a company transition. And you mentioned one very good, good example about the coal region. So, hundred models, for example, that are uh, implemented and run by this house and we are also and achieving the strategic objectives of this commission. So many thanks, it was really uh, uh, invigorating and very much encouraging. Thank you for you. anyone that really wants to ask a question, though it is not planned before we have the, uh, uh, a way forward to achieve the objectives that you just outlined. Sadia, <laughs> 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 That uh, Charlie has asked me 
to share with you a, a, a broad uh, uh, presentation about the, the, the understand C developing up to now, so it's, uh, in, in our society, and all the monitoring activities uh, and the development of indicators.